Hey guys, Hez here bringing you another video. Now, welcome back to another Spectating Pros or Spotting uh, Pros. Um, so apologies, it's not a gameplay video. Things are a bit stressful at the moment with getting content done. So, and you know, you guys are really enjoying these. You get to learn a lot about them. And, you know, we get to watch pros that we normally don't get to watch. So today we are watching a guy that's on the, uh, the account Suhio. I, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Uh, but this is Showmaker from DWG who is a Korean team. They are the third seed Korean team in Worlds this year. A lot of people would recognize uh, Naguri, uh, the kleptomancy top laner. Uh, well, that's the top laner for this guy's team. He is the mid laner of this guy. So why I picked this game is naturally, this guy does quite well um, on Kale in mid lane against Kiana. Now, when you add up all those things together, I don't know how that's possible. So he is currently, let's just say this account is in Challenger. He's got an 81% win rate. And remember that these accounts start with, um, you know, they start with a Diamond 1 MMR. And also it does appear that he might be like 100% duoing with his jungler, who I think is the jungler there on the Lee Sin. Which again, you kind of should expect for pros, more or less. So, starts E level 1, is running Kleptomancy. So everything's normal. Uh, but why I wanted to do this was, how does a Kale against a Kiana get fed in Challenger EU West? Kale, so many people, even in the video that we did a few days ago, going, God, she's so weak. Even I felt weak on her. How does she do it? Like, Kiana's really good in lane phase. She bullies, she one-shots. You can see the aggression level here, getting level 2 and just damaging the, the Kiana as much as possible. So how is it possible? You know, that that's what we're here to watch. Um, one thing instantly noticeable and... I don't know why, or is it just the presence of these players? Why is the Kiana so far back to a Kale? That's what's confusing me. Because normally when you watch a Kale get played, that the Kale is the one playing back, not the lane opponent. Especially something like a Kiana that's known for her burst damage and stuff. So it's, already it's a bit weird. Um, you know, is it because this Kiana player is a normal solo queue player and it's like, oh god, I'm against, you know, Showtime from a DWG. I think someone just subbed to me on Twitch. Thank you very much if you did. I'm not streaming right now, but thank you very much. Um, but yeah, like, is that is that the reasoning? Is that's what's happened? Also, worth noting, it's Rengar support. Again, that does happen occasionally when one tricks get involved and stuff. Um, but is that the reasoning? Is that why Kiana has been a bit passive in the early game? Because they know who that is. There's definitely that pressure. You know, I've played against a lot of pros in my time. You know, I've played against Reckless. I remember playing against Dyrus one time when he was on the US. And, you know, even me, I get a bit like, oh, God, that's that person. I'm sure that's even more elevated when you're playing, you know, these Koreans that have come over to EU West and they're playing on your server. I'm sure you're a bit like, oh, God. Um, but there's another reasoning, you know, potentially this Kiana player just wanted level three and then they'll go aggressive. And, you know, you can see the, the farm has gone the other way now because the, you know, Kale went down at the bottom side of the lane. Kiana kind of froze it for a little bit. And now the farm will basically even up after all of this has been taken. Worth noting on the spells bottom left, uh, she is maxing Q. So two in Q right now, one in W, one in E. So not maxing. Okay, teleport to top side. Kiana also roamed, by the way. Kale here is looking for just some damage. Well, again, that might not have been a, a you know, we're going to kill teleport. That very easily could be, I'm going to save teleport. Because that is fairly important. Um, You know, is it a great use of TP? Not really. But, you know, I'm sure the Riven is thankful. So both of them survive. Kiana, obviously very quick at roaming, even without Moby boots or anything like that. You know, she was just in mid lane and boom, she's in top lane. Um, so yeah, item wise, going for the CDR first. Shouldn't be too surprising, especially in mid lane. Uh, so in mid lane, you're generally against people, more people that can kill you. Top lane, not so much. Like if you're against something like a Maokai or a Mordekaiser, they might not be able to kill you in the early game as Kale. So you can get away with the attack speed earlier to help with your Klepto. Um, where in mid lane, the cooldown reduction is way more valuable because your spells actually mean more in mid than they do top because you're more likely to try and damage people with your spells, not your auto attacks, at least in the early game. Now, remember, obviously, this is the pre... Well, this is the reworked, reworked Kale. Uh, that level six is when they, they get ranged. And I just do want to point it out there that a lot of people still think that this Kale is incredibly weak. Um, I personally don't think she's weak. I think just a lot of people may play her bad. 
um even in higher ratings like you know i think all the win percent like the win rates and stuff are done from platinum and above there's plenty of bad platinum and low diamond players who aren't going to play great at kale i think she's just quite a skilled champion to pull off um you know mechanically she's not that intense but decision making and everything yeah she's not easy all right, gang coming through. Really nice use of the W by Kiana there. Rooting the Kale, forcing the flash at the right time. Um, bit of damage return coming. Maybe trying to force them to go for something and Lee Sin was in the area. But it will probably just fall back into nothing. So again, you can see potentially that these are duo. Again, the names are kind of similar. Um, and yeah, I, I do believe they are duo because, you know, this person, uh, Sue Hero, on this account, I think has played every game on eu west in duo which a lot of people say you know do i rate that uh, again these players aren't here to conquer solo queue for eu west they're here to practice for worlds you know all that solo queue is for them while they're here for worlds is practice is maintaining their mechanics is maybe seeing if something is strong to then maybe play in scrims that's all it is so i don't i really don't care if the pros are gonna duo queue um so it's fine but, you know, to a lot of people, they'll say, oh, God, that achievement, you know, th these pros are coming over here and making EU West look like bad or any server. Like when Worlds is in like these pros make it look so easy. Again, do remember that they are given Diamond 1 MMR accounts before placements. So as placements finish, they practically get mid to high Diamond 1 instantly. Uh, obviously, you can't do that if you're a, you know, average player. Um, even if, like, you go 10 and 0. It's not possible, right? It gives them accounts of their ma, and they are doing every game. So, yeah, it's good. Obviously, they're fantastic players, but for solo queue achievement, you know, what I'd say is, you know, love him or hate him, TF Blades achievements are probably higher than pros in terms of solo queue. Not pro play, again, they're different things, but yeah, I, I have seen that occasionally going, God, these pros are making that server look, you know, whatever. Mm, there's a reason for it. And obviously, you know, these players in general could rank one servers no problem. But normally it would take a, a bit more time. So, the, it's not looking good for the bot side. I would have to say, I do feel sorry, obviously, for the Kaiser That she is kind of lumped together with the Rengar. And that's not to say the Rengar is going to do terribly the whole game. Um, just, what is that Rengar giving the Jinx... Uh, sorry, the Kaiser in lane phase? Nothing. It, nothing. Like, there's not a heal, you know, a stun. But it's a skill shot stun. So, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot. Nice return damage. Lee Sin is actually right now stealing the red. Morgana Bind just to zone off. Kale is still looking for this because Lee Sin is in the area. Lee Sin coming. He is going to just kick into the Morgana and just take that kill instantly. No assist for Kale. Kha'Zix might die here. Depends how much Lee Sin wants to go for it. Lee Sin does have flash. Kiana used ultimate, misses it. And that will probably be that. So that was Lee Sin's uh, first thing on the board. Mordekaiser Kaiser gets a kill on the Riven. Um, so yeah, Lee Sin has had not a very active early game. Maybe, and again, just spitting it out there, because the Lee Sin and the Kale are being so reliant in dual queuing, maybe their playstyle is, you know, usually, oh, I'll just gank you. Kale ult? No. Thought he'd be alive. Maybe that was a good communication. Don't worry, I'll smite the dragon. I'm not dead. Uh, nice kills happening. So Kaiser gets a return kill. Caitlyn doing any damage, and the dragon will be completed by the looks of it. Whoa! Oh, what are we watching here? This is Challenger, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a pro, right? I'm pretty sure that's a pro. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, wait, there's more pros in this game. Wait, there's more pros. That, Morgana, is Cloud9 Zazel. Or Zazel. Because I've got the pro list here of all the accounts in the US. Yeah, that's Cloud9 Zazel. Is anybody else a pro in this game? Uh, so who would it be? Like, I guess there's some, would they be dual queuing? Uh, doesn't, doesn't look like that would be Sneaky unless he's name changed because Sneaky's account is Uzi Mode 420. So yeah, I guess this person is just doing a solo queue game as support. That was insane, like, aggression. Very, very interesting. Again, solo queue games isn't pro play, but, um, yeah, wow. So the Kazakhs going for this again. Notice, by the way, worth mentioning. You know, in my solo queue games, you're your regular viewer of mine. I rabbit on about how important dragons and objectives are. Look at the craziness that blue team just did to try and just get that dragon. That Kazakhs knew he was going to die, but he went for that dragon because how important dragons are. So if you are that solo queue, you know, on um, Porofessa, you know, I love to see dragon lover next to their name. If you're someone that person is like dragon hater, this jungler never takes dragons. 
please fix that. You're literally watching the best players in the US go crazy over who gets an ocean dragon. It's not even an infernal. Ocean dragon. So yeah. Dragons are very important. Okay, Lee Sin maybe was looking at it, didn't hit the Q that he wanted, so doesn't go for it. So again, maxing Q does seem to be the maybe the most viable thing, which again, my last game on Kale, I didn't do. So maybe that's more of the way to go, possibly. Item build actually pretty interesting. So obviously we had the Fiendish Codex for cooldown reduction and obviously AP. We then got a Seekers, which I would presume is just to survive versus these two, just for lane phase. That's probably just going to stay there for a while. But then the attack speed. So this is going to go into Nasher's Tooth, naturally. Actually, giving the blue buff, that's really nice. Again, I'd, I'd say that's even further evidence to them being duo queue. Um, so, yeah. So getting that Seeker is, is just there to be a little bit beefy against the Kiana that can potentially one-shot you or whatever. And remember, Kale is pretty good at surviving things. Her ultimate, obviously, is a damage complete immunity if you time it at the right time. So lane swap has happened. Kiana now in bot side. Mordecai is in mid. Enemy bot has gone to top lane. Worth also mentioning, they ain't stopping. Rengar gets caught again. Kale's doing a bunch of damage to Maud, but they've got Rift Herald. They're breaking through. No backup right now, so that is definitely a mistake coming out of red side. Um, you know, this game is not looking very good for red. They're behind five, uh, four and a half thousand gold already. 12 minutes, four and a half thousand gold behind. You've got a Rengar support that's 0 3. You've got a Riven that's behind a Mordekaiser. It's not going great. And again, when you want to talk about scaling, again, I want to say, I, I know I say the word again a lot, but um, the weird thing to me is nice damage coming through here. Here's a gank. The weird thing to me is the dual queue choice of champions is a bit odd in a certain way. One way it makes sense. So if they're duo queue, your Lee Sin can maybe help the Kale in the early game so she doesn't have a crazy weak early game. That makes sense. But then you're playing something like Kale that you as a duo are picking something for late game, but then Lee, Lee Sin falls off, right? Wouldn't you duo queue to both play something late game? No ulti? No Kale ulti? Wow, that was confidence that she'd survive. Holy, wait, what? That, that's insane. So that's twice this game that I've just been feeling like, is there no ulti coming? No, there's no ulti coming. Nice E. This could be potentially on. Uh, Rengar continuing. He does no damage. And then walks into a trap. There's an ulti. Won't... Okay, it does save him. Nice dodge. Whoa. Do you guys see that sidestep? That was lovely. Lee Sin survives for now. Kale doing a bit of damage. Another dodge of a trap. And remember, that's another pro. So these two could be facing each other in worlds. Cloud9 versus DWG, I think it is. And dude, this DWG Kale is making... Um, the, the Cloud9 support kind of look like um, not a Cloud9 support. Alright, Kiana goes for an ultimate. So this is where the game is starting to turn. Kiana dies, double kill Kaiser, now 3 and 1. Mordekaiser in the middle. Rengar just surviving, will go down. Kale and uh, Kaiser now attacking. Lee Sin making her way back to the mix. Mordekaiser randomly flashes. He's 100% dead in that situation. And that will be an ace for red team. When, remember, they were 4,500 gold behind. An ace still doesn't even equal the gold at this point. They were that far behind. So again, they can always you can always make comebacks. It just takes good fights, good positioning. And what I would say, I think the Kale won them that fight. Like maybe Kiana got more kills. Maybe the Kiana did even more damage than the Kale. I firmly believe the Kale won them the fight by dodging all those Morgana binds. If those more, two Morgana binds hit the Kale, the whole enemy team could have jumped on the Kale. And remember, she used ult on the Rengar. So she could have just died by getting hit by a bind. She dodged two really clutch binds and continued the fight as a nice flow. So yeah, I truly believe that Kale just won them the fight purely by dodging things. Um, so Dragon happens again. Lee Sin does go down, but again... It's worth it. These people value dragons so highly. A death is worth a dragon. You know, that was the Lee Sin's first death in the game. And I can bet you, he's like, oh yeah, I wish I survived. He'll be fine with it. He won't mind. He got another dragon for his team. Two ocean dragons. Again, so many people, I keep saying again, so many people uh, used to not value ocean dragons. Generally lower rating people. But I think a lot more people nowadays see the value of Ocean Dragon. It's like a mini Warmogs for your whole team, but also gives mana. 
It's amazing. It, what advantage do you have? You go for a trade. You No one dies on either team. All five people. You leave. Which team has the advantage 20 seconds later? The team that has two oceans. They're regening like crazy. They've got ocean dragon. So that, that's why it's important. Split push Kale is coming in. No vision in top lane. Does decide to back off because there is literally no vision of the enemy team. So it's likely they, they may have like, you know, they might be roaming up. Um, Kiana does come and defend. This would be an interesting fight to me. Does Kale at this point have enough damage? Because that's not a lot. Does she have enough damage to deal with a Kiana? Saw Morgana in the river. Push into the side. Does get stunned. Enemy team is here. Lee Sin is in the area. Kel now fighting. Does ult at the right time. But will get stunned. He does get stunned but does enough damage. And nice Lee Sin W. Saves the Kel. She should keep running. Does get some... Oh my god. This is wonderful to watch. Lee Sin does a lovely save play there. The W was well timed. The kick was brilliantly timed. And picks himself up a double kill. How would you get better with that Lee, with Lee Sin? Like, that is just prime, amazing Lee Sin, which is awesome to see. Wow. And I will say, you know, by this stage of the game, easily the Lee Sin is doing the most damage in the game. But, slight spoiler, the Kale ends up doing the most damage overall. So, something happens. The Kale currently is 208. What the hell happens to make this Kale do the most damage and, you know, pop off by a bit more? Because there's not crazy evidence that's going to happen like it looks kind of like the game's going to end in the next three minutes and like the Lee Sin is just going to have the, the complete carry performance they will kill the Kiana another Lee Sin kill so yeah playing very well though this Lee Sin and I do believe he is a pro yeah there we go he is the jungler this guy is called Canyon he is the jungler for DWG and just to make it clear they have these the mid and jungle these two have duoed in every single game because it's a bit too much of a coincidence that they have the identical win rate, 81.1. They both have 73 wins and 17 losses. Identical. So, that yeah, they, they have just played every single game together. Which, for, for by the way, for practicing for Worlds, if that is what... I, I, don't re I haven't really watched too much Worlds recently, so I don't know what DWG's playstyle is. If their playstyle is camp mid lane and feed mid lane and those two are the connection tissue in the team then it's amazing, obviously, that's what you want. You want those two to play well together. Riven will get killed by the Maud. Maybe a QSS could be good for Riven. Um, but yeah, like, if that's their playstyle, then yeah, they're doing really well in Challenger EUS, so something's going right. Okay, so the Scuttle Crab is happening. Enemy team will be roughly in the area. Does get stunned, rooted by the river. Now the damage comes in. You can see the Kale damage is starting to show up. Boom, the Kaiser picks up the kill. So at the moment, it does kind of look like just Kale, the support performance. I do believe I picked the right replay. I say that every time and it turns out to be the right replay. But yeah, I think I've done it once that I accidentally recorded the wrong replay. And then after 20 minutes, I was like, oh, that was a waste of time. And then obviously it didn't get uploaded because <laughs> like they got stomped or something. I was like, oh. Neeson going for it. Does kick the Caitlyn. Little bit of mistake there. Now they're in trouble, potentially. The, the damage returns coming through. Kale gets herself out with the Lee Sin. Bad communication, actually, there. Kale going to continue the DPS. Won't get any kills, but they do survive. Lee Sin's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Ka Kaiser in the backside. Does get one kill. Will go down. Does get, I think, two kills. Yeah, two kills in the end. That's not bad uh, for one death. And they will continue the pressure. Oh, wait, no, they only get one. I, for some reason, I thought Caitlyn died. No, only one of them died. So one for one, that technically isn't worth the AD carry's death just to kill the support. Okay, so Dragonwise is an Infernal. So naturally, we've seen Red Team really want these dragons. Um, so expect them to want the dragon still. Uh, Build-wise, what are we going? So Seeker is... And Zonya's is not even being finished, by the way. It, it's just, again, Seeker's is being kept. Gunblade is the next item for Kale, which I have seen a bunch of people run Gunblade on her. It is good, um, but I think from memory, my reasoning, Riven dies again, my reasoning of my recent Kale performance, because I was against a Shen, right? I didn't do it against Shen because I don't believe Gunblade's amazing versus tanks. So I think I opted for the Bork build because obviously that's more tank killing. But uh, yeah, right. So they are together. They are going to push bot lane, maybe, and look for the Kiana, who is, by the way, one on four. 
Wouldn't say she played bad. There's the ultimate. Does get the lease in a bit, but not enough to stun him. She will flash away. And yeah, constant split push happening. So the Kale goes topside. And this is, again, something that I need to improve on. And most likely a lot of you need to improve on when you're a solo laner. Is make sure you are splitting. I've said it for ages. I don't trust split pushing a lot because I don't trust my team. But part of trusting your team and part of getting that, you know, carry potential is going to the side lane and is getting the crazy farm from split pushing. My farm generally suffers in mid to late game a lot more than even my early game because I'm grouping permanently and, you know, you're really not going to compete with an AD carry that is critting everything to death before you even get, can get an auto attack off. So I do really, I've said it for ages, I need to get better with that. I really do. So there is potentially something on Rengar fighting the Mord. Lee Sin lands a Q in the Baron pit. Mord, uh, Rengar might survive, but no, he's dead. Um... I literally don't know what that Rengar's doing this game. I, he might be trolling, or it's a one trick that was forced to support who should have dodged or whatever. Baron is being pinged, by the way. Kale is still bot side, does have teleport up. Bar they're not going to do Baron. It is risky, obviously. Uh, and they will, I think, try to flank the mid lane. Meanwhile, Kale is still bot side. Uh, so they these two will probably rotate down to the Kale and take the tier two. Baron is being pinged by blue team because it definitely now could be done. If there's three people bot side, then it can be done. Riven does have vision of Kiana. Maybe is a bit too late. You know, she didn't react quick enough. Not had, obviously, a great game, this person. She might survive. There is a chase happening. So Kiana is definitely there because you can just judge the Mordekaiser. Let's watch bot side. So again, these two working well together pretty much permanently. Riven will survive in the top side. And that will be that. So gold wise, has a thousand gold. I do believe that's enough. Ooh, one shot. Kale does go for a flash. Doesn't manage to get the ultimate off, unfortunately. So that, that's a pretty big blow to the Kale, using Flash to not be able to get the ultimate off. But oh well. Farm-wise, Kale doing very well farm. Riven finally gets the solo kill, and that is likely because Mord has been very greedy with his build. Uh, only one armor item, and that's only a ninja tabby. So Riven with a black cleaver is just going to shred that Mordekaiser pretty, uh, pretty easily. Lovely damage coming through, but then the Kiana damage return. Kale in trouble. Is going to be looking aggressive in basically a 4v1. Wow. Uh, you don't see that every day. Uh, and they will trade one for one in mid, in mid lane. It didn't look like it was going to happen, but it did. Kale is now 3 0 11. And you're starting to see the damage definitely show up now. You know, combining with the, the Gunblade use. Barret is being started. Both junglers are dead. So this is an op what I'd call an open Baron. Whichever spell does the most damage will end up killing it. Riven is looking for a flank. Is getting the flank, which is really nice. Now being a distraction, they've stopped doing the Baron. Get one kill. Mordecai's are now ulting straight away. Trying to survive as much as they can. Kiana going for the Kale. Does get killed. Now we're starting to see the Kale performance damage. Kaiser will go down. Again, QSS it. Oh, they should survive. Will do. They, the QSSs. That's what counts as Mordecai. Still a lot of people haven't worked that out. The champion literally... His ult is more or less the champion. And if you buy a QSS, like I think it's even better. QSS is even better versus a Mord than it is a Malzahar. Because a Malzahar can still do damage. He silences, you know, whatever. Mord of the Kaisers, you are denying someone being in existence with his team. So if you buy a QSS and you're the Kiana, you can still be with your team. That's way more valuable. Like Mal Malzahar ult doesn't stop someone existing with their teammates their teammates can still save them you can't save someone in Mordekaiser realm unless you get yourself out or kill him or survive long enough but yeah just buy a QSS it's not it's crazy you know I, I, I really don't understand why people aren't buying it but what has impressed me this game and I have to say very clean play obviously I don't know the history of these players but the the top lane of the Guri, the Lee Sin has done some very clean play and even the Kale has impressed me the dodging everything it's just generally impressive watching this. Main maximizing farm with mechanically pretty much not pretty much any any mistakes. The one mistake was flashing and not getting the ultimate on Caitlyn, which isn't really a mistake. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the Kaiser. That's not really like a big mistake. That's just timing. Um, but yeah, no, it's just very impressive. Um, and in all our pro watches, not many of them have stood out. You know, Sneaky didn't stand out to a normal AD carry in this rating. Double lift might have a little bit. Um, 
the jungle is having that we've watched. This stands... Well, really, the two of them are, to me, standing out more. The Lee Sin is standing out, and the Kale is standing out. And to you guys, it might not be the most obvious thing in the world. It's like, but they're not 20 and 0. Like, wouldn't they be 20 and 0 if they stood out? It's more than that. It's the little things. So, Kaiser gets ulted. Kale doesn't know what to do. Wow, Kaiser will kill the Mordekaiser. Weirdly. How did that happen? Um, <laughs> no idea. I guess he just couldn't get to her. And she didn't even use Flash. What? I guess he's just too squishy. Again, now he's buying armor, but I guess it's just too late. Uh, Lee Sin will go for a bit of damage return. Kale not hitting the, the Kha'Zix for some reason. Lee Sin will pick it up. 927. Kale obviously in the no death club right now. The only person in the game that hasn't died. And there we go. They are pushing into the, into the base. And just to make it clear to everybody, remember that at one point the red team was four and a half thousand gold behind at 12 minutes. That is ridiculously far behind. Um, like, very far behind. But they turned the game in a, you know, turned the game in under under half an hour, which is pretty impressive to me. Mordekaiser will probably die, I'd imagine. Probably to the Kale. Yep. So that makes the Kale 6017, no death club. And had the highest damage in the game. Lee Sin, <laughs> oh god, end the game. Had the highest damage in the game. Really didn't put a foot wrong. Um, and you know, that's probably going to be the title of this video roughly is this Kale doesn't make mistakes. And you know, people will say, but that, you know, the Caitlyn. Again, that's a timing thing. If, if sorry, if the Kaiser was a little bit closer, the Kale would, would have gone off. I wouldn't call that like a massive mistake. Uh, she didn't die. The ultimates were generally good. She never altered. She never didn't ult somebody that was dead. If you notice, she could have altered the Lee Sin near the dragon. He survived, so she didn't ult him. Bot side, the Riven nearly died. She didn't ult the Riven because this person, I guess, knew. Oh, they're alive. That's crazy. <laughs> like so many Kales. Are, oh, I'm ulting you just to play it safe. Not this Kale crazy really 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 good play hopefully you guys enjoyed though again apologies as well as spectate video for the main video of the day but if you guys do like what i'm doing you know i am trying here um just do me a favor and throw a like on the video throw a comment hopefully you guys have been enjoying recently and uh, i'll see you guys next time see ya